Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson, the OSU Cascades Instruction Librarian, and today we're going to talk about using WordPress for portfolios while you're in college. So why would you want to use WordPress for this? Well, it's both a blogging platform and a content management system, which means that you can use it for full-fledged websites, even if you don't have a blog on them. As far as content management systems go, WordPress has the largest market share by far. It's an open source product with a lot of developers making it a robust, powerful platform for using websites and blogs. To start with WordPress, you would go to WordPress.com. Now you might have heard of WordPress.org, but that is primarily for installing WordPress on your own web server. Since we're not going to go that far into this for your portfolio, we're just going to start with WordPress.com. You would choose the Get Started button if you need a new account. If you already have a WordPress account from a previous class, you could go ahead and log in and create a new blog on that same account. So, for this video we're going to pretend that we don't have a WordPress account yet. When you click on Get Started, you'll see a screen like this. You'll need to put in an email address that you can check easily since you need to click a link that they'll send you to finish your registration. The username is going to become the first part of your blog address. Now since there are millions of people on WordPress.com, it might be a little difficult to choose your username, so you'll probably have to get creative because you might see a note to the side that your first choice is already taken. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you want this website to be private to just, say, your fellow students or your instructors, then you probably don't want to use your real name as part of your username. However, if this is going to be a portfolio that you share with prospective employers um, or at professional conferences, then using at least a part of your real name will probably be a good idea. After you've filled in the top information, You'll come down here, and to start with, we're just going to look at the free version. You would click Create Blog, and then you would go check your email for that message they'll send you with the confirmation link. That will have you fill in a blog title, set your language, and eventually you'll come to a point like this. This is your dashboard. It's also called the Blog Admin. If you're not sure how to get to your dashboard, but you are logged into WordPress. You should see your username or website name in the top black bar. You can hover on that, and in the menu that comes down from hovering, you'll see a link to Dashboard. This is sort of the behind-the-scenes part of your website that only you can see when you're logged in. This is where you control, tweak, and change all the different elements of your site. For this um, video, we're not going to look at everything here in the menu bar. We're just going to look at the main things to help you get started. Let's start down here at the bottom with the settings menu. We're just going to look at three of these, general, reading, and discussion. Let's start with general. So under the general menu, this is where you can change your site title. You can also change your tagline. By default, the tagline usually says something like, just another WordPress site. You can either take that out completely and leave it blank, or you can put something in of your own. To see what these look like on an actual website, here's the Writing for the Web site. This is the site title, and this is the tagline. As another example, Storytelling Future File here is the site title, and this part is the tagline. How your title and tagline appear will depend on the theme that you choose, and we'll look at those in a little bit. So back on settings, the only other part of general settings that you might need to change will be the time zone. And if you make any changes, be sure to scroll down to the bottom and click on the blue Save Changes button, and that will be the case for all the settings that we look at. The next one we'll take a look at is Reading. There are two important sections here that I want to draw your attention to. The first one at the top here will determine whether your site is seen as a blog or as a more traditional static website. So if you want it to look like a blog, it would be sort of like this. 
Some folks aren't really sure what the difference is between a blog and a website. In a blog, you're going to see separate blog posts on the front page. Each of these blog posts will have a title, often an author, and a date. Some of them will also indicate whether or not there are comments. So as you add new blog posts, such as with the new post button here, the newest posts will appear at the top of this page automatically. A more traditional website will not show the dates or individual blog posts. There will just be a static web page that people see whenever they come. Um, so depending on how you want to structure your portfolio, you'll need to choose whether you want your latest posts or your blog to appear on the front page, or if you just want a static page, and then you would choose from the pages that you create. You can change this at any time, so you don't have to decide right now. The second part of the reading settings page that I wanted to show you is site visibility. By default, WordPress sets your site visibility to allow search engines to index to your site. This means that if someone wanted to search for content on your site in a search engine like Google or Bing, then they eventually will see a link to your site. You can ask to discourage search engines from indexing it. This means that your instructors and your fellow students and prospective employers will be able to see your website if you send them the link. If, however, you make your site completely private, then you would have to add or invite other people individually to come view your site, and they would have to log into WordPress in order to do that. So those are your visibility privacy options here under Reading Settings. And again, if at any time you make changes here, be sure to scroll down and click Save Changes so that they'll actually apply. The only other part of this settings menu that we'll look at is the discussion page. This is sort of related to privacy in that here you can choose whether or not you're going to allow people to post comments on the new articles, pages, blog posts that you add to your site. You can also turn comments off individually on separate posts or pages, depending on the content or how you feel about having comments there. You can also choose to have comments close on articles after they become a certain age. This is a good idea to prevent spammers, uh, because spam bots will often target older pages and older, older blog posts. Okay, so that was settings. We looked at general reading for privacy settings and discussion for comments. Users is where you would invite people to join you either as fellow editors and writers on your site or just to give them permission to view it if you've made it completely private. Appearance is sort of the rabbit hole of WordPress. People can spend a lot of time here because this is where you choose how your site will look and that's both a blessing and a curse. Something I really want to warn you about, though, is if you're using this as a free account, you will not be able to use the custom design. That is only for premium WordPress account holders. If you do go there, um, you might see ways to play with those kinds of things, but you won't actually be able to apply them to your website, tempting as they might be. So, the first thing I wanted to show you will be themes. And this is the most dangerous part of the rabbit hole because you have so many options here. Now, at first, you're going to see the theme that is applied right now. So whatever is showing at the very top of your themes page, this is what your WordPress website has currently. Down below, you'll see available themes. So these will sometimes have orange buttons. That means that there is a cost to use that theme. If there is no orange button, then these themes are free and you can use those. All of these will have details that you can click on to see a little bit more information about how this theme is intended to be used with a website. Some of these are primarily for photo blogs, some are for video blogs, and some are for text. So depending on what kind of content you'll have in your portfolio, that's how you'll decide what kind of theme you might want to use. If you don't want to scroll through all 200 plus theme options, you can use the feature filter here. Before we go looking at some other themes, I wanted to point out that in the theme we're currently using, we have an additional section of our appearance menu called Theme Options. Not all themes will have this. If we go to Theme Options, 
we'll see that we have different layout things that we can choose depending on sidebar arrangement, number of sidebars, and where we want the sidebar to appear. So let's go to themes and we'll look at those feature filters. By clicking on this it opens up a array of checkboxes. We can choose by color, number of columns, features, but keep in mind that the more things you check the fewer options you're going to end up having. So I'm going to choose three columns with theme options and I would like a responsive layout. Now I will apply filters. Before I do that notice the number here and see what it changes to. So by clicking on that I've now reduced the number of themes to 14. Some of these will still be premium and some of them will still be free. So I can scroll through, look at some details to see if there are any that look particularly tempting. And eventually when I find one that I want to try I will click on activate. You'll see that your WordPress is working on that and then the page will refresh and you'll see at the top new theme activated. Fortunately this one also has some theme options since that's one of the filters that I selected. If I click on that I'll see what kind of options this one gives me. Instead of layout like the other one we were using this one gives us an option of link color. So as you can see some of them give you more control than others. Other things that you might end up playing with while you're here in the appearance menu include the header. So many of these blog themes allow you to choose a header image for the top of your blog. In this particular theme we chose not to use a header image and so all we have for the header is the site title and the tagline. In this one same thing we just have the menu, site title, and tagline. So if we go back to header, there's the image that they give us by default, or we can choose a file from our computer, or choose a file from our media library, which we'll look at in a little bit. Some themes also let you do a random slideshow through the theme images that they came with. What that means is every time you refresh the page or visit the page, you might see a new header image at the top of your website. You can also remove images completely. And remember, anytime you make changes, click the blue button at the bottom. Now, the next thing that we'll look at here under appearance, and probably one of the more important things for content, will be the widgets. So what is a widget in WordPress? Let's look at our website examples again. In this website, we have a sidebar down here on the left and each of these sections of the sidebar are individual widgets. In this example we have two sidebars. We have an image widget, we have a tag cloud widget, and we have a pages widget. There are a lot of different options for what kind of content you can include in a website. Sometimes your sidebars will be collapsed when you first come into this menu, so you'll need to click on the little arrow to the far right to open that up. If you want to add a widget to your sidebars, you would choose your widget. Let's see, I'm going to choose Authors. And you would drag that over to the sidebar, either above or below any existing widgets, and drop it where you want it to appear. Many of the widgets will have further options for you to fill in, such as titles, customizing options. Every time you do anything here, you'll want to click Save and then Close. Now, Widgets is one of the few pages where when you go to the bottom, there is no blue Save Changes button. You have to be very careful when you're working with your widgets because it, WordPress is saving changes immediately as you're working on them. In order to see what kind of changes have been made, you can always click on your website title up here in your black bar, and that will take you to the public view of your website. Whenever you want to come back here to your dashboard, just hover on that again and choose Dashboard. So we've looked at the settings and we've looked at the appearance. Now we're going to look at adding content to your website. You have two main options for adding content. There are posts if you're using it as a blog, 
and there are pages, which apply to both posts and websites. So let's look at examples of posts and pages. Here again, and writing for the web, on the main page we have separate posts. Each of these that you see with a title and author and date, like we said before, is an individual blog post. Up here across the top we have pages. Pages are usually used for the navigation of the website. These are static pieces of content that will always be there. Some pages can have child pages, which means that they will then create a drop-down menu for that page of related pages. In this website, we have one main page that's used as a sort of table of contents. And then here below, we just have an about page in addition. So going here to posts, if we click on the post menu, we'll see a list of existing posts. And we can either hover on the post menu and add new from there, or we can add new using the button on the post page. Let's take a look at what it looks like to add a new post. Some of this will look very familiar if you've used things like Blackboard um, or even Microsoft Word. You can see a lot of it is very familiar like bolding and italics and choosing your formatting style. If you don't see two rows of formatting buttons when you first come into your editing page, click on this little button at the far end. It's called the kitchen sink and it will toggle the second row of formatting buttons on or off. So you want to, of course, give your post a title. And then down below is where you can add text or add media. Here on the side, you can also change the visibility. So like I mentioned before, you can make individual posts or pages private if you want the rest of your site to be publicly visible. You can also come down here on posts and set a certain format depending on your theme. Normally you don't really need to worry about this, you can just choose standard. Now something that blog posts have that pages do not are the options to add categories or tags. You don't have to have categories and tags. Um, by default it'll just call them uncategorized. But if you're curious about why you might want to use these things, Let's look at this example here. This is a portfolio for a storytelling class. There are two ways to navigate the stories. There's either the table of contents list or there are the tags. So you can tell by the size of the tags which ones have more stories behind them. For example, humor has eight different stories, whereas magic has nine different stories. And if we click on any of these, then on our side here we will just see the stories that apply to that tag. And from there we can go into other tags like family and see a new listing of stories that apply to that tag. So basically tags and categories are a way for you to make your site a little bit easier for your reader to navigate, especially if your site is going to have a lot of different content. Now for some portfolios, it might only be two or three pages, so you might not need to worry about that so much. Once you've finished um, writing your post, you can either save the draft to work on it later, or you can go ahead and publish it, which will make it publicly visible if you have your website public. Now keep this visual in mind, and let's look at what it would take to create a page. So here too we can click on pages from the menu and it looks very similar. We have a list of our existing pages with a note about any that are in draft status and we can use the button at the top to add a new page. The formatting bar here will look just like the formatting bar we saw for posts but there will be a couple differences. First when we go to visibility Instead of making it sticky, we don't have that option, but we do still have the option of making this a private page, a password protected page, and so on. Now instead of the categories and tags and things like that, we just have page attributes. So this is where we would choose a master page or a parent page 
if we wanted this to be part of a drop-down menu. So again, that example was like here. These are pages. Syllabus in this example is the parent page, and these are all child pages of syllabus, so that they will be part of that drop-down. Here too, you can add media, add text, save it as a draft, or publish it when you're done. It's important to do one or the other so that you know WordPress has saved your most recent edition. Now, the last thing that we'll look at is adding media. And this appears over in the sidebar under your media library. So media here is referring to files like images, sound, video, or even documents, PDFs, and so on. As a free account holder, you get three gigs of memory to hold media. If you are going to add documents, I highly recommend that you use PDFs. So, for example, if you have things um, in PowerPoint or you have documents in Word, try to save them as a PDF, which you can do from the file menu. And that will make it easier for your readers to read your content. They'll be able to open it directly in the web browser rather than having to save it and open a different program. If you want to add new media, just like we saw in Pages and Posts, you would choose the Add New button at the top. And here you can either drag and drop files here, say from your desktop, or you can choose Select Files and use your Windows Explorer or Finder menu to go to the files you need. I'm going to drag a file here from my desktop. You can see below it's crunching, and now the file is available. Now, also, it gave it you know, a generic title. If I'd like to give this more concrete information, I can click on Edit, and it will open a new tab with a preview where I can look at the file URL and add a caption, alternative text, and description. So the alternative text is actually really important. If you have any readers who are visually impaired and using a screen reader for their web browser, then instead of seeing the image, they're going to hear the browser describe the alternative text to them aloud. So that's why you should try to add that whenever you can. Now, if we wanted to put this image into a blog post or a page, we would go to, say, Posts, we would add new or we would edit an existing page and you can do that whenever you hover over a title you'll see the edit option we put our cursor down where we would like the image to appear once our cursor is there we click on the add media button from here we can either upload new files or we can go to our existing files in the media library tab i'm going to click on the image i just uploaded and here I'm going to give it some alt text and I will click insert into post. You'll see that it came in really big, usually about the size of the original image. If you want to change that once you've got it in your post, click on it once and you'll see a little landscape button to the side of the image. Click on that and WordPress will give you the option to reduce the size down a certain percentage. I'm going to reduce it down to 60%. And this is also where, if you want your text to wrap around your picture, you can choose which side the text is wrapping. By default, it'll go to the, the picture will be on the left, or I can have the picture be on the right of the text. Our alternative text is still there. And if we want the link to go to, say, a separate website rather than just a larger version of the image, we can change that here as well. Once I'm done making my changes, I would click on Update, and now we can see the image is a more reasonable size for our blog post. Anytime you make changes, this blue button will say Update, and you'll want to make sure you click that to make sure that things get applied that you've done. So, that is a long-winded overview of WordPress, using it for your portfolio. If you have questions, feel free to email me at sarah.thompson at osucascades.edu.